you thought that idea at 24, yeah, yeah, 24 yeah. years old, started it when you were 25. Throughout that whole year, what was it? Procrastination or was it you just you just didn't know how to do it? I didn't know how to do it. It wasn't procrastination. Was it on your mind the whole year though? Yeah, it was on my mind. And that's something when, when I have something that comes to my mind, even if it's like, hey, I should reach out to this person or yeah. I should reach out to that. Like, and, I, and it keeps popping in my mind, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. But if it happens consistently, this idea kept coming to me, kept coming to me. And it wasn't like I, I'm the first person that invented this. There's other companies that do something in the space, but from my opinion and other people's opinion, we've elevated the tracking and journaling your trades to a whole new level, right? The, the features and stuff we have and so on. But it was like, I've seen what's in the space and I was like, I want to elevate it. But I didn't know how to, because that's not my expertise, right? But then when I pause and I look at people like Jay-Z, for example, he's a billionaire. I was like, he didn't know how to get to the billion. He just kept going on, yeah, right? Yeah. He started a, a drink company and then he started... Uh, stuff with uh, Rockware or whatever, all these different mentions. I'm pretty sure he didn't know how to do it, but he went forward, went forward and kept moving forward. So thing, same thing with other people like LeBron. You take LeBron, for example, same thing. He was able to come from nothing into this mega billionaire now and most of the money came from outside of basketball, but he didn't know how to do everything. Yeah. So it's the same essential thing, yeah. So are you willing to say how much you actually invested into a software company? Because as you said there, it's expensive. Ah, uh, I can tell you off camera. The reason I, I don't want to say because also right now it for competitor purposes and market purposes and investment purposes, if you raise money, it just kind of gives out private information because we're not a public company. Mm -hmm. I can tell you off camera, but we did spend more than seven figures. I will tell you that. Okay. Yeah. So here's what I'll do when I'll assist the main thing. Sure. You started at 25. Yeah. You're 28 now. Mm -hmm. That's three years, yeah? Yeah. Have you seen that return yet? Oh yeah, yeah, we we we've seen the return, but I have in person in my bank account. I haven't seen yeah, it. But the business, back. Is, the business the is doing return. every dollar is going back into the business. I don't want to see money from the business. I've I've said that because what we are trying to build and I like what we're trying to build isn't going to be complete until end of 2024. Okay. We're still developing. We're spending like our payroll right now is six figures a month. Is it's it just okay. payroll? Yeah. yeah. So we're 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 consistently still building, and I haven't seen a dollar back, but. The business is doing well. But from my point of view, like when I started, I was like, I don't want to see money from this. I want it to be at this level, supporting this many traders and be this tool that actually benefits people. And whatever the end result is, is the end result. So how does it work? Is it almost like a subscription service? It's a subscription. So if I was a trader, I'd, I'd you know, sign up. Yeah, it's a subscription service. Uh, like I said, uh, right now, it's like you upload your trades, you connect it to your broker, MT4, MT5. If you're a stock trader, you you know upload your broker from there. Yeah. It'll download your data, show you all your stats. How do you trade on Mondays? How do you trade when the market gaps up, market gaps down? You can write notes. If, you t if you're taking a trade, let's say January of 2022, you can hit a button called replay and you can see the action that happened on January of last year when you took the trade, where you got in, where you got out. So it really allows you to refine you know, your trading, find your edge, see what works, what doesn't work on like a very deep level. I mean, to me, it, it makes it sound like if you're a trader and you know what you're doing anyway and you have the basics, it sounds like that's like a easier way to do it. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, you, you you need to, right? You have a business. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to track everything. You're your analyzing business. everything, yeah. every single move that you make. Exactly. So as a trader, you, you, you need to see what strategies are working under what market conditions, what strategies aren't working. How do I refine to in my positions? What position size is working for me? Like for me early on, like the biggest thing for me was journaling. Right. So I used to, when I was trading my first two or three years, I used to see these mental patterns I used to have. Like, hey, why do I always lose money on Mondays? Okay. Well, I don't know why I do. So when I started journaling my thought process and looking into my thought process and everything, I started realizing it's because we have a long weekend. I'm waiting on Monday. I'm super excited for the market. When the market opens, I go in with that excitement, not looking at good trades or not, put on too much size, lose the money on the first trade. The next couple of trades or days, I spend time and money trying to make my account go to break even. Yeah. So like, I didn't realize that until I went to like the mental side of it. Why am I doing these moves? Why am I taking this trade? Why am I acting this way? So when you go deeper, especially like early traders, they have like this whole concept of like understanding, right? Of, of about themselves and, and and the trading. That's the thing. My mate Shweb he tells me this all the time. Half of the game is all mental. Yeah. It's all mental. Mm -hmm. but anyone can trade forex, but have you got the mental capacity yeah. to, you know, go through what it takes to actually trade and be successful? Yeah. Right? And that's a completely different ball game. Yeah. So hats off to you yourself, Shoaib, and anyone else who does it to that level on a legit level as well, because you obviously you get fakes along the way on I'm Instagram. Sorry, of course, yeah. You yeah, say yeah. to do the same thing. Especially now in the industry, yeah. That's what I'm saying, yeah. There was one thing you said you wanted to touch on earlier regarding that as well. Sure. So what was it? Oh, uh, it was it was about the Forex space, right? Uh, so I, I recently learned this. So 
it, on my on my trading, I've always, you know, showcased like how much I've made. So in like the past four years in trading, I made fifteen million plus in just trading alone. Yeah. And crazy. see, when I say these numbers, a lot of I guess people naturally go to, well, he's lying. Which I understand, right? And I'm not here yeah. to say, right? I think people who say it's lying just can't fathom. No, no, it's okay. I, I want them to immediately think I'm lying. That's right. okay. And I don't blame them for that because if someone throws out a crazy claim, like naturally we're going to think, well, oh, this guy's a liar, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Especially in a space that's very toxic. Now, in all the money that I did make in the past four years, every year I posted a broker statement, not like a picture of me logging into my broker. Now, when I did that for the past four years, I was always like, oh, I'm good. Like people see me logging in. But in the past few months, I learned in the Forex space, a lot of people that trade Forex and have brokers, they have agreements with brokers because these brokers are not regulated. Yeah. And they're like, hey, and brokers are reaching out to influencers and they're like, hey, hey, what's up, man? We'll show that you made $5 million from this broker, but get people on this broker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what happens. I didn't know that. Yeah. So when, when you know, and in, in, in stock world, like the broker I, I posted is TD Ameritrade. They're regulated. Even if I contact them, they don't care. They're like a multi-billion dollar company. They don't care to do any of that. And they can because it's illegal, right? So I didn't know that until I kind of started diving into the Forex space. And I people like, well, you know, you can do that with brokers. I was like, wait, what? I was like, oh, now I get it. Because when a lot of Forex traders see my profits, they're like, oh, well, he's fake because of that. And I'm like, now I get why they think that, right? Because essentially, I didn't understand like the whole, I guess, dark side of Forex or the Forex markets at that time, especially the broker side. So tell me, tell me this. Yeah, you, you said there you made 15 million. Yeah. That's over the course of your, your trading, right? Over the course of my whole trading, maybe uh, maybe like 18 million. In the four, past four years, I made uh, 15, right? In the past four years, you made 15. Yeah. But you said one thing to me before we started the podcast. You made 7 million, am I right, in 2021? So 2021, 7.5 million. So seven and a half. So majority of that money in the past four years, about more than fifty percent, came in one year. So what was it different about that one year? That's what I really want to work out. Sure. So two things. So.